Thanks for tuning into this week's edition. We cover a lot of extravagant items on this YouTube channel, such as yachts and luxury cars. But there would be none of these things to cover without the wealthy individuals that buy them. That's why this week we will be taking a journey to see who the top five wealthiest people in the world are and how they got to their elite status. The fifth wealthiest person in the world today, according to Forbes's real-time billionaires list, is none other than Warren Buffett. Buffett is known throughout the world by anybody that participates in the finance, investment, or insurance sector. At 92 years old, his net worth currently sits at around $113 billion. Warren Buffett was born in 1930 in Omaha, Nebraska to Layla and Howard Buffett. His father, Howard, was a U.S. congressman and taught Warren about finances at a young age. Warren became very fascinated with financial concepts and bought his first stock at age 11. He even filed his first tax return at age 13. Buffett graduated from University of Nebraska at the age of 19 and then went on to graduate from Columbia Business School. Here, he created and fine-tuned his investment philosophy around the concept now known as value investing, which he learned from Benjamin Graham, the father of value investing. Warren went on to enroll in the New York Institute of Finance to focus on economics. Here, he began investment partnerships and even included Graham in one. In 1956, he created Buffett Partnership Limited. This investment firm went on to acquire a textile manufacturing firm called Berkshire Hathaway. Warren assumed the name and created a diversified holding company, eventually becoming the chairman and CEO of Berkshire Hathaway, Inc. In 1978, Charlie Munger joined Buffett as vice chairman, and the business has now become one of the world's leading corporate conglomerates. Berkshire's current market cap is close to $708 billion. The unheard-of investing success has brought Buffett his nickname, Oracle of Omaha. Today, Berkshire Hathaway's portfolio consists of billions of dollars worth of companies like Apple, Bank of America, Chevron, Coca-Cola, American Express, and many more. Buffett is survived by three children and is still living in Omaha, Nebraska, in the home he bought for $31,000 in 1958. Coming in at number four is Larry Ellison. Ellison is one of the tech giants of the modern era. He is 78 years old and currently has a net worth of about $117 billion. Ellison was born in New York, New York, to an unwed Jewish mother in 1944. When he became sick as a child, his mother gave him up to be raised by his aunt and uncle. He originally attended University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign as a pre-med student and was even named Science Student of the Year. Larry had to withdraw, however, due to his adoptive mother coming down with an illness. In 1966, he decided to attend University of Chicago to study physics and mathematics. This is where he first encountered computer design. Not long after, he moved to California to become a computer programmer. In the 1970s, Larry was working at Ampex, where he became fascinated with Edgar Codd's research on relational database design for IBM. One of Ellison's first projects was working on a database for the CIA, which he named Oracle. In 1977, Larry Ellison founded Software Development Laboratories, SDL, with just two partners and an investment of $2,000. The company released their initial version of the Oracle database in 1979. In 1983, they decided to rename the company after its flagship product and became Oracle Systems Corporation. Oracle has gone on to acquire numerous software companies and has grown into the third largest software company with a market cap of $253 billion. Larry Ellison, as executive chairman, CTO, and co-founder, owns about 35% of the software giant. He has put his billions to work and acquired the Hawaiian island of Lanai in 2012 for nearly $300 million. Moving on to the third richest person in the world in April 2023, it is Jeff Bezos of Amazon. Jeff Bezos is 59 years old and is currently worth $128 billion. Jeff was born in Albuquerque in 1964 to Ted and Jacqueline Jorgensen. At the time, his father was just 19 years old and his mother was 17 years old and still in high school. His mother left his father in 1965 and married Cuban immigrant Miguel Bezos in 1968. Jeff grew up in Houston and Miami.
Bezos went on to attend and graduate from Princeton University in 1986, where he obtained a degree in electrical engineering and computer science. Coming out of college, he first began working on Wall Street but eventually left in early 1994 to pursue something greater. Jeff Bezos found an uncommon path to his wealth by creating an e-commerce giant known as Amazon. The company was founded in 1994 as an online bookstore and operated out of his Seattle garage. It became so successful that they expanded into a variety of other businesses such as e-commerce, video and audio streaming, artificial intelligence, and cloud computing. Today, Amazon has a market cap of about $1.1 trillion. It is the world's biggest online sales company and the largest internet company by revenue. The second wealthiest person in the world is business magnate and investor, Elon Musk. The 51-year-old Musk currently has a net worth of $168 billion. Elon Musk was born in 1971 in South Africa to Errol and May Musk. His father was an electromechanical engineer and property developer, and it is said that he owned part of an emerald mine in nearby Zambia. Elon grew up in a wealthy family. In 1980, his parents divorced, and Elon chose to remain with his father, a decision he now says he regrets. He became interested in video games and computing at an early age. He went on to attend University of Pretoria in South Africa for a brief period before moving to Canada at the age of 18 to attend Queen's University. Two years later, he transferred to University of Pennsylvania and completed a degree in economics and physics. Elon Musk started his business career with his brother Kimball when they co-founded an online city guide software company that they named Zip2. In 1999, this company was acquired by Compaq for over $300 million. Musk then co-founded a company called X.com, which merged with Confinity in 2000 to become what is currently known as PayPal. PayPal was acquired by eBay in 2002 for $1.5 billion. At this point, Musk was a wealthy man, but he wasn't done yet. Instead, he founded SpaceX later that year with just $176 million to solve the issue of spaceflight services and satellite internet. But why stop there? Elon became an early investor of Tesla Motors in 2004, a company focused on creating electric vehicles. By 2008, he was appointed CEO. With both companies finding some success, he turned his attention to co-founding OpenAI in 2015 to pursue artificial intelligence and then doubled down to co-found Neuralink the following year to pursue the development of brain-to-computer interfaces. In 2017, Musk founded another business called The Boring Company, which aims to construct underground, high-occupancy tunnels for vehicle travel in order to bypass above-ground traffic in the world's major cities. His most recent and probably most well-known pursuit is when he acquired Twitter in 2022 for $44 billion. Twitter currently has a market cap of $41 billion. SpaceX has a reported valuation of $137 billion. Boring Company's valuation is around $6 billion. Neuralink is estimated to be $1 billion. And Tesla Motors has a current market cap of $482 billion as of this video. Elon Musk has since parted ways with OpenAI, but their cutting-edge technology has earned the company a recent valuation of almost $30 billion. It is hard to keep up with this billionaire's interests, and he still has time to post on Twitter. We finally make our way to the world's wealthiest person. The number one wealthiest person right now is Bernard Arnault. He might be familiar to our viewers as the owner of Superyacht Symphony, which was designed by Feedship, and discussed in our previous video, Billionaire Super Yachts. The only non-American on this list is 74 years old and has built a wealth of $237 billion. $69 billion wealthier than his nearest competitor. But how did he do it? Bernard Arnault was born in northern France in 1949 to Marie-Jospé Savinel and Jehan Léon Arnault. His father owned a manufacturing and civil engineering company known as Ferré Savinel. Bernard attended École Polytechnique, which was France's leading engineering school at the time, and graduated in 1971. He immediately began to work for his father's company, and they began to shift their focus to real estate development. 
In 1984, Bernard heard that the French government was preparing to choose someone to take over Boussac saint frere which was a textile and retail conglomerate at the time, and owned his mother's favorite brand, Christian Dior. Arnaud went to work, and with the help of Antoine Bernheim, who was a senior partner at Frere at the time, he was able to acquire a luxury goods company known as Financière Agache. This key business decision allowed Bernard Arnault to win the bidding war for Boussac saint frere and subsequently, Christian Dior. Being the savvy business mind that he is, Arnault proceeded to lay off 9,000 workers in the span of two years and was able to sell off all of the company's assets except for Christian Dior and a department store known as Le Bon Marche. By 1987, the company started to turn a profit and brought in $112 million from a revenue stream of almost $2 billion. Later in 1987, Arnaud worked with the CEO of Moet Hennessy, Alain Chevalier, and the president of Louis Vuitton, Henri Racamier, to form LVMH. In the summer of 1988, there was a rumor that the Louis Vuitton group was trying to buy LVMH's stock to acquire a large enough share to form a blocking minority. In response, Bernard paired with the Irish beer producer Guinness to create a holding company to acquire the necessary shares. Bernard himself spent $600 million to buy 13.5% of LVMH's stock and became the largest shareholder. The next year, he spent another $500 million to control 43.5% of the LVMH shares and 35% of the voting right, which gave him the blocking minority he was so desperate for and title of CEO. They have become one of the largest luxury brand groups in the world. In 2021, they added Tiffany and Co. to their brands for the price of $16 billion. In 2007, Arnaud acquired 11% of the world's second-largest food distributor, Carrefour. He subsequently entered the yachting world in 2008 with the acquisition of Princess Yachts, Royal Van Lent, and Feedship. Arnaud was even an early investor in Netflix in 1999. LVMH has a current market cap of $481 billion. The path to wealth can take each person down very different paths. I hope you enjoyed taking that journey with me. Please like and subscribe if you did. Let me know down in the comments what you would like to see more of.